carcinogen in the Pepsi house. Look at hydrochloric acid. Does not break down anything. It converts pepsinogen. Pep Let me just tell you this. Pepsinogen does not break down anything. Hydrochloric acid converts it to pepsin. Pepsin is an enzyme that works at pH 2. It does not work at pH 7. Okay? So the acid converts pepsinogen to pepsin. Now the pepsin's there in the proper pH. And now the pepsin can cut the peptide bonds and break down your proteins into amino acids. So, yeah, you always get this view, oh, yeah, the acid, like you throw it in there, it's like, you know, you throw like a head of a horse into an acid vat and it comes out all broken up, right? right? Well, that's not what's happening, right? It's not like things are like being, you don't have a cauldron vat of acid in your stomach, right? And things go in there and they do that. No, the, the acid does break down some things mechanically, but the chemical digestion is because HCl activates the pepsin. That's what it does. Otherwise, there's not a picture in there. Question? Why are you having all this CO2? Ah, great. Because this, you know why it's such a good question? Because this question I ask on every exam, and most people don't get it right. Well, more people than I would think don't get it right. Yeah, where do we get all this CO2? From the H2O. Why do you keep having so much CO2? Well, I'm just saying, right? You keep, you can keep water's blank, right? You need CO2 to keep making this, making this. Where does the CO2 come from? Thank you. I told you it's one of the ten most active cells in the body. Ten most active cells means it is breaking down uh, glucose, carbohydrates to make ATP, and in the Krebs cycle, you are making all your CO2. So I always ask this question when I think about it. Yeah, I've been way less than half it because it's just like. You know, it's like, wow, you got to step back. Well, what, what's going on here? This is a very active cell. You have like an almost, you always have a little bit of water. You almost have a little bit of CO2. So good. You make this, you understand this, and the HCl is just going to convert pepsinogen into pepsin. Okay, good. Let me go to the notes. years ago. Stomach. Chief cells and parietal cells. That's all I remember. And I remember one secrete HCL and one secrete pepsinogen. And I probably knew at the time, but you know. This secretes pepsinogen, which is inactive. And it's converted to pepsin by HCL. Gastric lipase is also secreted. Parietal cells secrete HCL. We talked about that. The deck, you know how that works. And so, you know, here is the main things I want you to know. I don't care about mucus. I care about really what the uh, pepsin engine does and what HCL does and how you produce it. Uh, there's other things to create. Some called intrinsic factors. Does anybody know about this? Yeah, you need it to, um, to absorb vitamin B12, and without it, you cannot make hemoglobin. So if you don't have intrinsic factor, uh, you're going to get a form of anemia. Remember, there's like you know, 12 different ways to get anemia, maybe more. So interesting how all these are related. So now i got to talk about these various hormones. And I'm going to end there. But I just want to say this, that these hormones are, I look at them this way. And there's a bunch of them. I'll show you the names. And this is only like five of them. Gastrin, cholecystokinin. I like that word, cholecystokinin. Say it with me, cholecystokinin. Okay, secretin, uh, GIP, motilin, glucagon, like peptide 1. And I'll tell you what these things do. They orchestrate. Do you know what a conductor does? Well, good. Tell me about it. I have no idea what that does. What that gal does. What do they do? Take it. Take it. No, not. <laughs> no. They orchestrate, right? Right. Movement of food into here. How long does it stay here? When does it go to here? What is released when it gets here? There are a bunch of hormones that say you start gastric motility. You stop it. 
You move it from here to here. You open up the sphincter. You let this skin be secreted. So I've never, uh, I keep threatening to do it. Like, I'd like to teach this one time just to get the whole story. But then I realized this, what's the point? Because I just told you the point, right? These hormones are orchestrated. And now you get, I just showed you, how many hormones here? Six? Here's like really another 12 more that I know of. So to tell the whole story would be almost impossible. Yes? You know, and I know what the point is. But let's just take a look at it. Gastrin, what does it do? So this is what tells your stomach to produce gastric acid, yes? Obviously, it's gonna, do you think it's going to do that when you have just had a carbohydrate meal? If the gastric acid only is involved in protein digestion? No, I wouldn't think so, right? You know, I'm just saying. Um, uh, polycystokinin, uh, it stimulates the pancreas to secrete enzymes and bicarbonate. It also stimulates, wow, we talked about the gallbladder, yes? The liver, yes, is producing bile, yes? Storing in the gallbladder. Notice, can you live without a gallbladder? Yes. Yes. What happens? Well, then you are making bile and it's always seeping into your small intestine. Instead of making bile and storing it, so that when the conductor says bile, right, you're up. So, you know, I do know a little bit about this that, you know, they have to watch what they eat. They've got to eat a certain diet because they don't have the bile being released when you need it. It's always there. Obviously, you can live with it because they take out the bile, the, the gallbladder quite often if you have cancer because it is not a vital organ, I guess, like our spleen, right? Yeah, something like that. Yes, yes. So this is why I said I would always like to teach this. Like maybe one whole lecture on this. But then I'm like, wow, there's a bunch of research. Look at all that's going on. I mean, if you just read this, it's like six ends, uh, six hormones. There's a lot going on. Yeah, some's received and some. So the whole movement through your GI tract is actually quite, um, quite amazing. I'm just sitting there thinking about it right now. And like I said, it's like wow, there's a lot of things here. I don't even bother teaching because. Yeah, I don't think I really want to figure it out. I really, I really don't want to figure it out because I know I couldn't teach it. Because there's just too many parts, right? There's too many things you just can't... Um, it's like reading a Russian novel. You know what I'm talking about? Go read Dostoevsky or Toy Story. Go read it. Tonight, if you can. Take about three weeks. I feel like a long thing. But they got like 27 characters in there. And they all got these long names. And they're all names you're not familiar with. And you're just like... I, whenever I read them, I have like a little scorecard over here, right? A little synopsis. So this is who that guy is. <laughs> uh, so look at we are uh, we're, we're, where are we at now the stomach. So next time where are we going? Yes. Well, I'm gonna leave you with this little cartoon. <laughs> who, who comes up with this stuff? All right, so uh, meet there at 6.30, and we will... Uh